I want to say thank you to Brandy for this concept of small wonders. Um, was that what it's called, small wonders? Yeah. One of my small wonders is when we're in church and all of a sudden Paul starts playing the trombone and I didn't know it was coming. That just fills me with a lot of joy. I'm like, oh, there's a trombone. So thanks for, for being a small wonder. Um, there's, a, there's an author that I love. His name is Ross Gay. He's a poet, but he's also written books of essays. And uh, he has written two books now. I haven't read the second one yet about delights, the book of delights. And I, a lot of his are small wonders, but he like took a whole year of his life and every day he tried to find something that delighted him and jot a little essay about it. He did not put all 365 of them into a book because that'd be really long. Um, but he did put selected ones in a book. And hearing him describe those delights, those small wonders, uh, really helps me with my own practice of looking for those things out in the world. Because I think there are things for us to be delighted by every single day. Um, but a lot of times we just get on autopilot and we don't notice them, right? And uh, he's written another book that I just finished. Oh boy, what's the other one called? It is, is it something about joy? Do you know, anybody know? Okay, well you can look it up later. It's something about joy. Um, and he talks in the beginning of that book about how the world is really heavy. Like there's just a lot of heaviness. And so then some people say that it's maybe irresponsible to be joyful, but he sees joy as an act of resistance and that it is precisely when the world feels really, really heavy that we can't let our joy be taken away from us. Um, and I think actually in some ways, that's similar to what Paul was saying in this letter to the people in Thessalonica about rejoicing always. I don't know, sometimes I hear him say rejoice always and I'm like, Paul, <laughs> seriously? Like, some days, some days don't feel like there's any joy in them at all. Um, and he says to give thanks no matter what. And there are some things, I think, but I think what he's saying there is not that we have to give thanks for everything that happens. Because there are some things that it is absolutely okay to not be thankful for. I think rather what he is saying is that even when things feel very heavy and even when things are very hard, there's still something we can find to give thanks for. And that is where I want to talk about Pollyanna. So if you read, I know you're excited, um, if you read the, the newsletter article, which I'm not going to make you raise your hand to share whether or not you ever read the paper newsletter, but I wrote about Pollyanna and how I love Pollyanna. She has a bad reputation for being like this, you know, we say like, oh, don't be such a Pollyanna, meaning you're being silly, you're being happy, even though there's nothing to be happy about. But if you've read the book or if you've seen the movie, she has this game that her father taught her called the glad game. And that game is essentially that no matter how bad things get, and for Pollyanna, things were pretty bad. She lost her parents. Did, her mom died in birth, is that right? I'm gonna have to get Greg to help me out here. Her mom died when she was born, and then she was very poor. She and her father lived out in the Western United States. They were missionaries. They were very, very poor. And then her father died too. And then she goes to live with this grumpy aunt. And she's this little girl who has lived through what we would now call like unspeakable trauma. She would have, we would have said now she has a very high ACE score, if you know what those are. Her life has been unbelievably difficult, and yet in the midst of that, her father taught her this game called the glad game, which is that no matter how hard things get, it's really helpful if you can find at least one small wonder, one small thing to be thankful for that you can hold on to. And I think that's what Paul was talking about too. So I think that uh, gratitude, Sometimes we don't, I don't know, it's like there's gratitude journals and there's hashtags on Instagram and it's gotten kind of, you know, I don't know what to call that. And then there's Thanksgiving, which is really complicated because the holiday itself is really complicated because of the myth of how it came to be in our country. And then also not everybody's feeling thankful at Thanksgiving. Maybe it's very difficult for you to be around table with the people you're going to be with or maybe you don't have a table to go to. And yet and still, despite all of these problems and complications with Thanksgiving, I think this harvest time of the year is a natural time for us to think about the ways in which we are thankful and to practice gratitude. And so I want to practice gratitude a little bit together this morning because like any other spiritual practice, we call it a practice because we have to keep doing it over and over again to build up our gratitude muscles. And so the way that we are going to do that is this. 
I am going to invite you to just kind of get centered together. And then I'm going to share a prompt with you. And if you have something that you want to share out loud, if you're on Zoom, you can put it in the chat and we will share it here. And if you're in the sanctuary, you can just give me a wave and I will try to repeat what you've said so that everybody can hear it. Try to keep it to just a word or a phrase, not a whole paragraph now, both because I need to be able to remember it to repeat it and also because we want to make space for us to all be able to reflect in some way. If you have a whole paragraph, I would love to hear it at fellowship hour. Okay, just hold on to it. Um, and then we'll close at the end with a brief prayer. Any questions? Okay. Let's take a breath. Centered in this beautiful light, centered within God's spirit of love, we commit to practicing gratitude and strengthening this muscle so that we'll have it more abundantly every day of our lives. And so we share together now the ways that we see and connect with the holy in the natural world and maybe animals. So if you're on Zoom, you can put it in the chat. If you're here in the sanctuary, you can give a wave. Yes. Trees. Hiking trails. Owls. Owls. Sunlight. Sunlight. Especially in this room, right? Yeah. Courtney. When pets come and love you because you need it. On Zoom, we've got Janet with sunsets, Leslie with sunrises, and Jackie with autumn leaves. Yes. Warmth. Yes. The sound of ocean waves. The sound of ocean waves. I can hear that right now and feel the way that feels. Paul. Squirrels. Squirrels. <laughs> Even when they're on your bird feeder? Okay. Yes. Oh, up, up here. Lorelei. Um, leaves. leaves. Did you have one too, Brandy? You were just waving for her. The sound of rain, the air that we breathe, that makes all life possible. And we can forget about it completely, and it's still there for us. Yeah. Emerson. Peanuts. Absolutely. Okay. Let's move along to, yes. clouds. That's a really good one in Kansas with our big open skies. All right, we are moving on to the ways that we see and connect with the holy in our friends and our family. I started really easy, like with nature. Now it's going to get a little bit harder because now we're talking about people. And people are wonderful, but they're a little more complicated than leaves, right? Yes. Can you say it one more time? Common values, when we share common values. April has one in the chat from Zoom that is an embrace from a loved one. Did you just have the same thing over here? There was an echo over here. They had the same one, the feeling of an embrace from a loved one. Yes, Patty. Grandkids. Grandkids. Yeah. FaceTime with your distant relatives. What a time to be alive, right? When we can not only hear voices from far, far away, but also see faces. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, one second. When, what about listening? Yes, when we need to be listened to and when people listen. Yeah. Okay, up here in the balcony. Let's do Emerson and then Graham. Your brother, Elliot? Yeah, for siblings. And Graham, how about you? Your sister, Margaret, your friend, Finn, is that right? And your dad and your mom. Yes, Joy. 
memories. Yeah, the way that we can keep people alive even when they're gone and the way that we can turn the memories over on our minds and go back to those times. Julie. Family and friend dinners. Yeah, shared meals around tables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we exchange the peace and people you know and don't know act like they're happy to see you. And maybe even sometimes actually are happy to see you. Right? Courtney? Mm -hmm. Transitions. Yeah, transitions in our relationships, both the good and the bad. They're all important, right? Um, Sabrina said in the chat, returning home to family, that feeling of returning home. Leslie lifted up shedding tears, that feeling of when you need a good cry and, and maybe perhaps when you can share it together with someone else, that's especially wonderful. And Janet said smiles. Okay, now we're going to give thanks for the ways that we see and connect with the holy in the various communities that we call home. So this could be different for lots of people because we all have different ways of being in community. Um, it might be the congregation, it might be Manhattan, it might be the United States or wherever you are in the world, it might be um, your work community or an organization that you're a part of or an affinity group that you're a part of, whatever you think of when you think of a community that is home to you. How do you see and connect with the holy there? Mm. Judy's lifting up Second Helping, which is our community meal that happens on Sunday night, and she feels gratitude for the huge effort that people make to make sure that it's available for anyone who needs it. Yeah. And also the people that work at Second Helping are a great community to each other. They are, absolutely. The people who work at Second Helping are a great community to each other, and I would also add the people who attend Second Helping are an incredible community for one another, watch out for each other, and take care of one another. Emerson? I can't see your mouth and I couldn't hear you. The donut room. Yes. Fellowship hour in the donut room. Um, okay, we have some from the Zoomers. April says pride. Carrie says speaking your truth. Leslie says adult Sunday school. And Janet says chosen family who choose to love each other for all the right reasons. Yes. Yeah, when neighbors and whatever community you're thinking of, just take a moment to just check in and pop in and smile and say hello. And maybe even like when they ask you how you're doing, but they really want to know, like not just a, hey, how's it going, but an actual like, no, really, how are you? How's it going, right? Courtney? You are speaking my love language. The comfort and peace of entering a library, any library. That feeling of community, not just in the people, but all of the stories that inhabit that place. Libraries feel like church to me. Oh, Jack says festive feasters, which if you are new to our congregation is a, a thing we do where people get together in groups and share meals. Um, and Janet also says to add to Courtney's and local bookstores. Yes, yes. Okay, finally, I'm gonna go bigger. The wider world, beyond our communities that are close to home, the universe, strangers, not yet friends, if you're feeling really spicy, enemies. Barbara. Knowledge and understanding. Emerson. Oh, thank you. Very good. Uh, Emerson would like for me to be sure and explain what the donut room is to people who are new. Thank you. It's really important to make sure that people who are new know what we're talking about. So we have fellowship hour after worship sometimes, and we have snacks. And sometimes the snacks are donuts that the kids have provided. And so they have renamed the room the donut room which I think is a great name for a room in a church, personally. Thank you. 
Okay, how, who else? Wide or big, 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 wide? Yes. Compassion. Thank you. Ooh, the Aurora Borealis. Yes, Mary Ellen. Wow, yeah. She says, reconciliation with people that you've had difficulties with over the years. That, that's powerful, isn't it? And sometimes feels like a complete gift that we have no control over. Like it just drops right into your lap from somewhere beyond, right? Tracy? Tolerance. Tolerance. Yep. Um, yes. Ooh, the joy of going someplace new. And just having no idea what to expect and every single little thing there being new, right? Yeah. Over here. What was the first part? Forgiveness and understanding. understanding. Courtney? Teaching empathy. empathy. I'm going to get Joy and then Lisa. Yes, the neighbors in need offering, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Thank you. Lisa? Lisa? Talking to a stranger in a line, isn't that just delightful sometimes? Yeah, it really is. Like the way those are some of these, some I'm thinking of these things, so many of these things that we missed during the pandemic that I feel like I have a new appreciation for now because we didn't have them for a while. Yeah, oh, I better check my Zoom. Oh boy, there's all kinds of Zoom here. <laughs> Carrie says, picking up someone else's trash. Lovely. Leslie says, unity amidst polarization. Janet says, curiosity and connections with people in passing in unexpected places, like a line. And Hannah says, music. Yes. Teachers. There are not enough words of gratitude for teachers. Finally, anything else? I tried to cover a lot of categories. But there might be one that's just burning on your heart that didn't fit in a category. And we want to leave space for that now, especially maybe for many folks who haven't had a chance to share. Yes, Marilyn. The wisdom of the ages. Yes. And Nancy? Martin Luther King Jr.'s nonviolent communication strategies. What a thing to be grateful for. Dean? Food. Amen. Food. And including peanuts and peanut butter and dad's PB&Js and everything else. Brandy? Brandy says when she sends the acolytes up on Sunday morning and she sees that someone has put a step up for the smaller kiddos who need to be able to reach. Yeah, that's, that's a good one for me too. Courtney? Yep, travel, but also technology when we can't travel that makes it possible to experience new things. And Jim, we'll let you have the last word. Uh, I smile when my wife is with me. <laughs> Jim smiles when his wife tickles him. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's. It's all right. Let's close with a word of thanks. Spirit of love, we give thanks for all the ways that we experience you. The big ways, the cosmic ways that we can't even fully understand beyond our understanding, and also the very small, particular wonders. Help us to never lose sight. Help us to never Forget how important it is to flex our gratitude muscles. Help us to be able to find something to give thanks for in every day of our lives. Amen.